You know what? I'm gonna say it. Fig Jam is my favorite design tool. Now that I'm a creative director, I probably spend more time in Fig Jam working on strategy, brainstorming and planning than I do actually like designing in Figma. I'm a really visual thinker, so Fig Jam is a extremely valuable tool in my process and it's become a little bit of a cliche at ConvertKit when we're in a meeting that I'm the one who's gonna drop a link to a Fig Jam we can collaborate in. I just love it. In this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 little things that will help you get the most out of Fig Jam in your work. Now, if you have never used Fig Jam before, then I have actually made a 101 introduction video that you can go check out. It's linked on a card up there, also in the description. That's gonna walk you through all the basic tools so you can start to know your way around. And I do recommend that you watch that first because in this video, I'm gonna be sharing a few more like nuanced things. Starting with number one, when you're voting on ideas, you should use stamps and not stickers. Stamps make it easy to see who voted for what, because when you hover over it, you can see the name of the person who put it there. If you add a sticker though, it just kind of like lives on the page with no sign of who put it there, which is great for anonymous voting, I guess, but usually I want to be able to follow up with folks about their opinions. I've noticed that people at ConvertKit really like using stickers, so maybe that's the same at your company too. I guess there's like more options than stickers. They can get more creative, find one that represents them. So whenever I am in a team meeting and I'm like running a voting process, this, I always say, please use a stamp so I can see who voted for what. <laughs> Fig Jam also has a voting tool now that makes this even more obvious. You like set instructions for what you're voting on and how many votes each person gets. And then the stamp is highlighted and it counts up as people use them. So that is very useful. Definitely use that. Another do this but not that tip is that you should use sections for a background rather than like drawing a rectangle with the shape tool. If you do it that way, when people add stickies to it, it can get really messy. If you try and like move the stickies around, you're gonna accidentally move the background. I've seen it happen so many times. If you use a section though, your stickies will actually like stick to it. So if you move the section, it moves everything together and you can more easily select multiple stickies to move them around and like do some sorting because the section is acting more like a background or a frame than it is the shape that acts kind of like as an element on the page. Tip number three is that sometimes people don't realize you can use arrows to connect anything. It's not just shapes in a sitemap or a funnel that you can connect. If you have the arrow tool selected and you hover over a sticky, you can start a connection point from one of these blue dots here, then drag it over to some text. And now those elements are connected. So if you move one around, you don't have to manually move the arrow. It's gonna move itself. You do have to make sure you are connecting to a blue dot though, because if you just put the arrow beside a piece of text or beside an element, it's not gonna be connected and move automatically. I really like using arrows to add on to people's ideas and sticky notes, kind of like a yes and type of thing. So that when people are looking over the Fig Jam asynchronously, they're gonna read it in order and see my idea is flowing on from this other person's. Number four is that you should be using Fig Jam for your meeting agendas. It is so fun. Here's an example of the agenda that David, the senior brand designer on my team, created for our design team meetings. It's an agenda that everyone can add to just by adding a sticky note. And we have a few constant items that we always like to check in on first. Like I said, I am a very like visual thinker, a visual person. So I much prefer this type of agenda to a Google doc. And I think it's way more fun to like mark off items with stamps when you've talked about them and to like see everyone's cursors all hanging out in the same place during a call. Within Fig Jam, there's loads of like agenda templates, so try one out. And related to agendas, the spinner widget is a very fun way to change up who is leading a meeting. We use this spinner each time we end a design team meeting to randomly select who the next host is gonna be, and I'll leave a link to this widget in the description. Another way you can make your Fig Jams more fun and creative is to get my library of hand-drawn vectors. I created this especially for all of the other visual people out there. It's really fun to add cool looking arrows, shapes, or have like a handwritten heading in there for next steps. This component library is called Scribbles. It's just $5. You can purchase it through the Figma community. And it's a component library I created with a hundred different shapes and four different styles that you can use in Figma or in Fig Jam. In Fig Jam, you can add Scribbles or any other component library that you have in the stickers section so you can just drag the shapes in and since they're components you can find all of the other variants just by clicking on the diamond icon. If you want to make your own hand-drawn vectors though then you can actually do that using Fig Jam as well. If you draw something with the pen and this honestly does work best uh, not on a trackpad I will say <laughs> but you can select anything you've drawn copy it and then paste it into a Figma file where then you can like edit it use it as a vector because it's a consistent line weight it's sometimes not the most hand-drawn realistic looking thing but this method is actually how I made the shapes that currently appear on my own website since I designed this homepage long before I had made 
scribbles. Tip number, what are we up to? Eight <laughs> is to use the timer to keep your meetings on track. In our brand design meetings, we set the timer right at the start to remind us when the meeting is going to be ending so we can make sure we wrap up on time. As the timer ends, it does like a very pleasant sounding ticking counting down sound and then a nice like, it's finished now. Tone. <laughs> but you could also use the timer to give people like three minutes to vote, five minutes to add ideas, whatever it is that you're working on. And you can play music for everyone too at the same time. If you hit play here, it'll play for everyone who's in the file, which is sometimes much nicer than sitting in silence while everyone adds their sticky notes. And I promise you, if you use this timer and music feature, you're going to look very fancy when you're running a fig jam in a meeting. Tip number nine is that many links that you post in FigJam will be rich links. So if you had a link to a website, for example, it brings in the preview image too. It's really great for collecting inspiration and much more useful than just adding a text link and having to click through to it to get the context. If you add a YouTube video, it's going to be embedded right in FigJam so you can play it there in your file. And if you add a link to a Figma file, you will better see a preview of the file and be able to click through to it to open it up. And this is something that we often do in our brand team meeting agendas to share files that we know we want feedback from each other on. And my last tip is that when you're in a meeting with someone talking through a fig jam or perhaps you're using the audio feature, you can click on their photo in the top right corner to follow them around the file. So when you're doing this, whatever they're seeing on their screen, you're going to see that too. It's going to like move the file around to follow that. And if you want people to follow you around a file, you can click on spotlight me in your photo and they will be prompted to do that. I use fig jam to create a mood board for our new illustration style at ConvertKit. And you can go watch this video over here to learn more about that process as well as see the final illustration that we came up with. I hope this was useful. Give it a thumbs up if it was, and I'll see you over there.